Good afternoon. It's great to be with you for our Bible study on this beautiful Thursday afternoon. Let's ask God's blessing as we continue in the subject, Who Am I in Christ? Dear Father, we come to you and we thank you for the Word of God that indicates to us clearly who we are in Christ. What do I become when I receive the, uh, the, the salvation that you have given me through Jesus Christ? I thank you, Lord God, that you not left us without knowledge. You've given us your word to display who we are when we receive Christ as our Savior. Not the same old person we were once, but the person we are through faith in Christ. Thank you, Lord. Inspire us with your word. In Jesus' wonderful name I pray. Amen. Now, who am I in Christ? Yesterday, we ended up with talking about us being a new creation in Christ. All things have passed away. Behold, all things, according to the word of God, have become new. When I receive Christ as my Savior, the old me died. Now, it is a spiritual reality. But the old me who has died is still activated by the new me if I don't walk in the light of the Word of God, the truth of the Word of God. In other words, if I choose to lie, I can still lie. But it's the new me I'm putting down instead of living in the reality of who I am in Christ. But I am a new creation, a brand new creation. And as the song goes, I'm a brand new man. I thank God for the day when I receive Christ as my Savior as a young, young boy. I thank God that he led me through the Word of God and through my parents into a church that taught me God's Word and to pastors that were great pastors of the Word of God. I thank God that God put within me the desire to serve him and that desire has never left me. The Word of God has truly changed my life when I received Christ as my Savior. I am a new creation. I'm a brand new man. Now we begin with a brand new verse of Scripture. We are born of God. Jesus said, to Nicodemus, you must be born again. Nicodemus, being very, very literal, said, how can I get into my mother's womb and be born again? He did not understand what Jesus was saying. Jesus declared to him, that which is born of the flesh is flesh. You need a spiritual birth. That which is born of the Spirit is Spirit. So, how do I get this spiritual birth? This spiritual birth comes when I accept Jesus Christ as my Lord, my Savior, my God, my Deliverer from all my sin. You see, the spiritual birth comes when I receive the Son of God as my personal Savior and Lord. I could not have gone to church and said, well, it was through the church I received Christ as my Savior. Uh, uh, no, no, no. It's through the Holy Spirit leading me to Jesus Christ that I received Jesus as my Savior. The church may have been used by God, but it was not the person that directed me to my need of Jesus Christ. That person was the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit of God. So it is 
I needed a new birth. The Word of God says in 1 Peter 1, 23, these words, For you have been born again, second birth, not of perishable seed, but of imperishable, not of something that is going to have to die one day. Physical birth means I'm going to have to die. But notice, through the living and enduring Word of God, God gave me a spiritual birth. So I've been born twice. Born physically, and now, through Christ, born spiritually. Now, I cannot undo my physical birth. It is a reality, and I cannot say, well, I didn't want to have it, so uh, maybe gone. It still is there. I cannot, friends, and it's clearly taught in the Scripture, undo my spiritual birth. Once I am born of the Spirit through receiving Christ as my Savior, I am eternally born of the Spirit. God does not unborn us any more than physically I can be unborn. Spiritually, I cannot be unborn. But when I become part of the family of God through receiving Christ, then God will correct me as a child. But he'll never deny me as a child. The Word of God is very clear on eternal security in Jesus Christ. The gifts and callings of God, remember, are without God ever turning away and not say, saying, I don't want to have them anymore. They're without him repenting, without him ever going against what he says. When he received me as his child, it was an eternal transaction. So I am born of the Spirit. And I thank God that God did that for me. And he's corrected me when I've strayed, if i have strayed. And he has blessed me when I have followed him. Just like my parents didn't unbond me, they corrected me when I was not disciplined. And they never denied that I was their child. So we remember that we are born of God, an eternal birth that will never pass away. And so God has blessed us with that reality. And we are also adopted by God. When I asked Jesus to be my Savior, He accepted me and adopted me into His family. You know, when a prospective parent, they can't have their own children, so what do they do in most cases? They will go to an adoption agency and they'll look for a child that will fit into their family. Okay? And that child is selected. And they adopt that child. When I received Jesus as my Savior, God selected me. I made the first move. I received him. Well, I should say this. He made the first move. He invited me. But when I was invited, I accepted him as my Savior, and God then adopted me into his family. What a wonderful reality. Listen to this verse, Ephesians 1.5. He predestinated us for adoption to sonship through Jesus Christ in accordance with his pleasure and will. Now notice what it says. He determined to adopt me, and when he adopted me, he made me one of his sons. I became a true son of God, not the son of God. There's only one of those, and that's Jesus Christ. But I became part of the family, and he called me his son. The word of God says God did all of that for me, and he did all of that for anyone that receives Christ as a Savior, and truly means it. He puts them 
into his family. I'm so glad, as the song goes, that I'm a part of the family of God. I've been adopted into the family of God from an orphanage to the family of God. I am a product of God's grace and God's mercy. And every single believer is a product of God's grace and God's mercy. So thank God that he did more than just say, well, I'll take it into account. When I received Christ as my Savior, said, Jesus, come into my life, save me. I repent of my sin. I want to follow you and live for you. God said, I'm adopting him into my family, and I've been adopted ever since, and I will not be unadopted, friends. Ah, it's such a pleasure to know that what God does, He does forever, forever. Thank God for that. So the Word of God makes it clear and very clear. I'm born of God. I'm adopted into His family. I'm a new creation. And, as we said last time, we're wonderfully made by Almighty God. Then in John 1.12, we read that we're a child of God at that point. We're a child of God. I'm a child of the King, a child of the King, as the song goes. With Jesus, my Savior, I'm a child of of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ. Hear John 1, 12. Yet to all who did receive Jesus as their Lord and Savior, to those who believed in his name, believed that he was the Son of God, believed he was virgin birth, believed that he died on the cross paying for their sins, to those who believed he gave the right to become the children of God. Wow! He gave me the right to say I'm a child of God himself. That's not pride. That's truth. That's truth. And you keep thinking that you are not a child of God once you've received him, and the devil will pull you this way and that way. But if you know the truth of Scripture, that once you receive Christ as your Savior, you're a child of God, the devil hears these words from you. Get behind me, Satan. I'm a child of God. And I rest in the Word of God and the truth of God. And so I can truly say to Satan, the only one, go to hell. I'm not going to listen to you. Reminding him of his future domain. And then the word of God says, I am Jesus' friend from the point of salvation on. John 15:15 15, 15 declares, Jesus speaking to his disciples. And I'm one of them. And if you've received Christ, you're one of them. I no longer call you servants. No, you're not just my servants. Because a servant does not know his master's business, and the word of God is his master and his business. Going on, because a servant does not know his master's business. Instead, I have called you friends. Friends. For everyone, everything I learned from my Father, I made known unto you. That means a servant doesn't know everything that God the Father has related to the Son. But a friend does. A friend does. I know everything that has been related by God the Father in the Trinity to God the Son in the Trinity, I know it because I'm a friend of God. Not because I did anything, but he did everything, and he now calls me a friend. 
think about that. Really digest that. God wants you to know that if you've received Christ as your Savior, you're a friend of God Almighty. Now, notice I keep saying if you've received Christ. It doesn't apply to people that just go to church. It doesn't apply to an individual that knows but does not receive Christ as their Lord and Savior. But to an individual who believes the Word of God and lives as best they can by the Word of God, it is applying to them. And therefore, I know for myself, and you can know for yourself if you are living the Word of God as best you know how and you love God with all your heart, you want to serve God and you want to go to heaven one day, you are called a friend of God. Wow. Wow. If that doesn't thrill you, my friends, if you've received Christ, you are dead while you're yet alive. That thrills me to know God calls me a friend. And he's relating everything to me that the Father has related to him. Now, that means all that God the Father knows, the Son knows, and God the Son tells me it. And much of it is declared the total reality of the uh, Godhead and what he did for us is related in the Word of God. It is, therefore, the Word of God. Well, let's go on. In Philippians 3, 20 and 21, it talks about us being a citizen of heaven. You know, I've got two citizenships. I'm a citizen of this particular country I'm living in. Yes, I am. And I have all the rights that a citizen of America conveys to me. All right? You are a citizen of whatever country you're in. You have all the rights that that country's citizenship conveys to you. All right? So I'm an earthly citizen. True. I'm here. I'm also a heavenly citizen. I became a citizen of heaven the moment I received Christ as my Savior. Heaven is my spiritual citizenship. I will go to my heavenly citizenship one day. And that citizenship will never cease. This earthly citizenship will cease, yes, yes. But this heavenly citizenship began the moment I received Christ as my Savior and extends for all eternity. And all the rights of heavenly citizenship have been conveyed to me as a child of God. Oh, praise God! Start studying what the heavenly citizenship's all about. That's quite a study. And then... We notice in 1 Corinthians 1, 2 that we're a member of the body of Christ. We're a member of the body of Christ. Notice what it says to the church of God in Corinth, to those who have been set aside unto holiness in Christ Jesus and called to be a holy people, just like Jesus is holy, we're called to be that kind of a people. Going on together with all those who call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior. Friends, I'm a member of the family of God, and I'm so glad that I'm a member of God's holy body through my faith in Jesus Christ. Then there are two more, which we won't get into verses, but I want you to notice, notice them as we conclude today. I'm never alone. I'm never alone. As a child of God, the Lord says, I will never leave you. 
I will never forsake you. When everybody's gone, Jesus is still there with you. And what a comfort that is. And finally today, I am love. John 3, 16. For God so loved me. I'm the world. I'm part of the world. For God so loved me that he gave his only unique son, Jesus, that if I would receive him as my Savior, I would not end up in hell, but I would end up in eternal life. It's all through Jesus, all to him I owe. Sin had left a crimson stain in me, but Jesus washed me white as snow. I'm pure through the blood of Christ before the Father. Every child of God has that determination to live pure, even as God says we're pure. Well, God bless you. Tomorrow we'll be on a brand new subject, but it'll all be from God's holy word. Have a wonderful, wonderful day, and keep praising God, and keep thanking God for who you are in Christ. God bless you.